Hey, what's up, nerds? Paul here at Radio Free Hammer Hall. Today we are talking about the much maligned Pasquale Blight Lords. They are one of my favorite units in the Nurgle range, both on the table and uh, the models themselves. And it really makes me sad that so many people are really down on these guys. So let's go through the war scroll and go through all of the related things. And hopefully I can convince some of you out there that Puskile uh, Bite Lords are worthwhile to have in your lists. They're not an always there thing, but they definitely have their place in the Nurgle arsenal. So we start off with an eight inch move and they can fly four up save. And then they have disgustingly resilient as well. So they have a five up ward save eight bravery, generally pretty irrelevant seven wounds per model, two models in a unit. So you got 14 wounds at four up five up, uh, for 190 points. That's a lot of defensive power. Now let's go over their offense. So we have the Blighted Weapons. That is the weapons of the Riders. And that is the exact same profile uh, as a Putrid Blight King. So you get uh, a Putrid Blight King on each model. One in every two uh, Pusquoil Bite Lords can get the Dolorous Toxin. Uh, one attack, fours and threes. Rend two, though, and two damage. Uh, foul Mouth Parts are on all of the flies. Two attacks, threes and threes, one damage. Venomous Sting, one attack, fours and threes. Rend one, d3 damage. So, this looks, in a lot of ways, very similar to just a Putrid Blight King. You know, we have the same blighted weapon rule. And let's not forget that the blighted weapons got FAQ'd. So now it's on a hit of six, not a hit of six plus. So getting a, a hit buff or a hit debuff does not affect those anymore. Um, but we do have those exploding sixes that turn into D6 hits instead of one, which is really, really valuable. Uh, the little side note of Virulent Discharge, you know, rolling a D6 in your hero phase on a six, it does mortal wounds to your enemy. On a six, it does mortal wounds, or it heals wounds to yourself. So overall, um, how does this War Scroll read? Well, there's two models per unit or per lot rather i guess you would say so at 190 points for two of these guys it is very unimpressive on offense and to a certain extent it is questionable on defense too it is 14 wounds for 190 points with a four up five up but with Blight Kings, you get 21 wounds for 140 points. Uh, you don't have the 5-up ward save, but, you know, you're also 50 points cheaper. So, why are we using these? Well, part of it is that the 5-up is a mortal wound protection, so that has added benefit there. But one of the things that I really need to point out is the keyword issue. They are mortals, demons, and rot bringers. So they absorb buffs from your other Nurgle units incredibly well. There's a lot of good benefits out there that these guys can pick up very easily. And some that are designed specifically for them. And we're going to go into those in more depth. So in general, there's a couple of different ways that I really look at how you use Pusquil Blight Lords. You can build them as an alpha strike unit, 
you can buff up their movement and buff off their offensive capabilities and get a decent alpha strike in and then have a big block that is difficult to move. Um, an alpha block, you can really move these guys up. They're on 60 inch, or sorry, not 60 inch, 60 millimeter rounds. So a unit of four of them takes up a lot of board space. So you can really block off lanes on your opponent and prevent them from moving around and guard objectives very easily with those. And also just as objective grabbers or, you know, units that are constantly threatening objectives because of their mobility. Now, you might say, they only have an 8-inch move. They're not that mobile. Well, as we know about everything in Nurgle, everything is faster than it looks. Because there's buffs everywhere. And let's start taking a look at some of them. Now, our direct synergies from Heroes Command Abilities. Uh, we have the Lord of Afflictions, Spearhead of Contagion. You pick a Pusquail Blight Lord within 14 inches of that model, and you add 8 to the unit's move characteristic until your next hero phase. So it doubles their base movement. Really incredibly powerful. Suddenly these guys move 16 inches. Uh, the Great Unclean One, uh, these guys are Nurgle Demons, so they can be targeted by this, and you add one to the attack's characteristic of all melee weapons used by that unit uh, until your next turn. Uh, it's important to note that they have four attack profiles. So a unit of two is going to get seven extra attacks every time you punch Grandfather's Joy. That adds up to be quite a lot, especially when you combine it with other things such as the Glotkin, which basically have a similar ability, except it is a bubble, and it's 14 inches, and it's just all Nurgle. It's on a less durable body than the Great Unclean one, but it's still very strong. The range is less, and that means it requires the Glotkin to be up closer to combat than what you would usually do with the Great Unclean one. Very frequently, uh, I would have the Great Unclean one sitting back further. So, our hosts. Munificent Wanderers give us two really good buffs. So our general ability is the Locus of Corrosion. So all attacks against your Nurgle Demons reduce enemy melee rend by one. That is incredibly powerful. Uh, makes your guys a lot more durable. Uh, and then one last gift is the uh, command trait that goes on your general. And for unmodified hit rolls of six that target your friendly demon units within 12 inches of the general... Uh, you, the attacking unit suffers a mortal wound after the attack sequence is resolved. Uh, let me tell you guys, I did this, used Munificent Wanderers in a thriceful befoulement list, and with bouncing back mortal wounds on uh, the sixes to save with the great unclean ones and one last gift. I think I was doing more damage to my opponent by them attacking me than me attacking them. It was a tremendous amount of damage. It should be noted though, that this is a bit of a non bow with one of our best artifacts. Uh, the wither stave makes your opponent reroll sixes to hit. And this is looking for sixes to hit. So it's just going to make you look for a different artifact. Um, and while it, this host is forcing you to take a particular thing for your first artifact anyway, so if you run a battalion and grab a second artifact, I uh, would not recommend Wither Stave. 
Anyway, uh, on Blessed Sons, the big thing we have here is the command trait Foul Conqueror. Uh, once per turn, you can use the At the Double Command ability on a friendly Rotbringer within 12 inches of the general without spending any command points. And just as a refresher for people that don't know what rules are called, that is when you spend a command point to change a run roll to six. And here you get to do it once per turn for free uh, within 12 inches of your general. For those keeping track at home, if your Lord of Afflictions is your general and has Foul Conqueror, they can spend a command point, give your Puscoils plus eight movement, and then they can automatically get a free run of six giving them a total movement of 22 inches. And then you have the Feculent Gnarl Maw, which can also give them run and charge. So that makes them incredibly mobile. Incredibly mobile. Uh, the other minor thing that we get in Blessed Sons as well is when one of them goes down, you roll a d6 on a two up, your opponent takes a mortal wound. This is a very low model count unit. So that's not that big of an issue, but it's worth mentioning. Uh, for Drowned Men, we get Bloated Raider. Um, this is also our command trait. You can reroll charges for friendly Puscoil Blight Lords within 14 inches of your general. Now, I don't understand why a bunch of these things are within 12 inches, and then this one was within 14. Like, are we going to be thematic, or are we not going to be thematic? I don't know. That extra two inches doesn't seem to like it really matters one way or the other. Um, and fluff wise, it would be a lot nicer to have 14. And occasionally it might matter in a game. Anyway, Drowned Men feels like it is the Puscoil Blight Lord host. And on paper, it is specifically naming Puscoil Blight Lords. But personally, I think Munificent, Munificent Wanderers and Blessed Sons do way more for these guys than Drowned Men does. So, let's look at all of our movement buffs that I just brought up. Uh, our Blessed Sons host can get us a free at the double, so a six inch run. Our Lord of Afflictions can spend a command point to add eight inches to movement. Great Unclean One with a Doomsday Bell can add three inches to movement. And the Cycle of Contagion uh, can add two inches to all units' movement. The Feculent Gnarl Maw gives them Run and Charge. The Affliction Slist lets them Deep Strike and lets the Lord of Affliction's command ability affect all units within 14 inches of him. So all of these things put together, our maximum threat range is potentially 27 inches plus a charge. Now, 22 of that is really, really easy to get all the time. You just need to keep your Lord of Afflictions alive and near your Puscoil Blight Lords. And those are two things that you just want to do anyway. Like, frequently... Your, your Lord of Afflictions is a really good support piece for your Puscoils and is, like, it's another Puscoil in general, and he's also durable, has an extra wound, uh, can do extra mortal wounds to your opponent. Um, he carries a Rust Fang really well. Um, so there's a lot here to work with. But, you know, you're regularly looking at, you know, moving a third of the width of the table or half the way horizontally across the table. So this is an incredibly mobile unit. And you get there when you're in the Blessed Sun's Host with one command point, which is very easy. And you don't need to spend that every turn that's something where you buy an extra command point in your list and you maybe use that once or twice in a game and it has a tremendous impact on 
the overall game because there's so many things that you can do when you have a mo unit that is 26, 27 inch movement and flying. So you have a lot of movement opportunity here. On offense, we already talked about the Great Unclean one and the Glotkin adding extra melee attacks across the whole melee profile, giving us seven extra attacks each for a command point uh, for every two models in the unit. Lord of Afflictions, with a, when he's within seven inches of Pusquale Blight Lords, also lets them reroll ones to hit. So that is also very strong. Another reason to keep your Lord of Afflictions up close to the unit. He adds more offensive power to them. Um, I left off here some of the, the things that just can kind of happen anyway, like the, the Cycle of Contagion, you give them plus one to wound. Uh, you can throw Blades of Putrefaction on them, which can turn out to be kind of a lot of attacks when you say, take a unit of four and then buff them up with a great unclean one, they're suddenly throwing 40 attacks in a unit of four and they have exploding sixes and sixes do mortal wounds and they're re-rolling ones to hit. Um, it, it can become quite powerful. It can be a nice little uh, alpha strike bomb. All right, so defense. Blessed Sons and Drowned Men give us uh, mortal wounds on a two-up every time a model dies. Relatively minor, but uh, it might dissuade some opponents a little bit from going all in on attacking these guys. Munificent Wanderers and Droning Guard, they reduce rend by one. So that is really powerful, um, really useful across your whole army makes you much more defensive. Munificent Wanderers also, uh, within 12 inches of your general, does mortal wounds when your enemy rolls a six to hit in melee against them. So that is a real... Um, it's not actually defense. It's more of a deterrent for offense. Uh, the Great Unclean One, his spell can heal D3 wounds to a unit. These guys have seven wounds each, so they can absorb healing really well. And important note here, the Harbinger of Decay used to be a great accompaniment to this. Uh, but with the GHB 2020, the ward saves no longer stack. So he is not a benefit to your Pusquail Blight Lords any longer. So overall... What are these guys good for? They are incredibly mobile. They are very, very fast. They're a little expensive, but they are very frequently worth their weight in the right list. You can build a heavy offensive list, um, but it needs to be very skewed, I think, to make it powerful. Um, defense is easy to do. Um, you can just make a couple of easy choices that make them stronger defensively, um, like put them in Munificent Wanderers and keep the, you know, make the Lord of Afflictions your general and keep them near the Pusquale Blight Lords. Um, and then suddenly they just do all the things that you want them to do. They're hard to kill and your opponent gets killed trying. Um, in general, along with that, they combo well with things that you're already going to do. So you're already going to run one of those hosts, you know, and basically no matter which one you pick, you're getting benefit. Um, in general, you're going to be most likely to take either Munificent Wanderers or Blessed Sons, and both of those have really good options for you. Um, the models, again, are on a 60 millimeter base, so they have a large footprint that really limits enemy mobility. So these guys are a really great utility piece they're filling a place in the nurgle force that doesn't otherwise really exist they're the thing right now is just spamming blight kings that seems to be what everyone wants to do and that leaves you with a very 
uh, one size fits all sort of answer for a list. And I think that if you're going to have a more successful run, you need more dynamic things in your list, like the high mobility of, you know, the Pusquale Blight Lords with the combination of either the Lord of Afflictions or a Great Unclean One or both. Um, definitely a possibility. I really like this a lot. Um, I have very frequently been running uh, four Pusquale Blight Lords in lists and many times they just go, they muck up the board, they get into combat, and then when the time is right, you know, the Lord of Afflictions buffs them up on their movement and they jump over the lines and grab an objective that your opponent thought was safe. So that is about it for now. Thank you all once again for watching. And don't forget to like, subscribe, turn on notifications, all that good stuff. And of course, if you'd like to drop us a little bit in the tip jar, you can head over to Patreon. Link will be in the description. Thank you all again for watching. I'll see you all.